guys, welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding Portsmouth. Uh, now, in the last episode, we finished off the season with our very frustrating 3 all draw against Arsenal, but it proved to me that we can actually mix it with the big ones. That's actually four points we've taken from Arsenal this year, and it maybe should have been more. So, I had some decisions to make over the summer with who to let go, who to bring in, all this kind of jazz, basically. Uh, before I get into that, uh, I just wanted to ask you guys a question, because I always like to run this sort of stuff by you, just so I can kind of gauge opinions on it. Basically, um, it is currently Wednesday, for me, anyway. You guys will probably be seeing this Friday, I think. My point is, my computer should be arriving tomorrow. The screen came today, it's glorious, um, the rest of it should come tomorrow. And then I'll obviously, you know, you won't see any videos on it immediately, because it's going to take me a while to install everything, get it all set up, ready for video editing and recording, and y you know how it is. Um, but one thing I was going to ask is basically, no, I've not seen anyone else do this, but the, there's obviously a reason why nobody's done this. It can't just be, you know, uh, lack of foresight. There's obviously a reason why. And that is, would you like to see occasional face cam stuff? Now, I don't mean like, um, the reason I don't, I can guarantee that people don't do it is because if you put a face cam on an FM video, it's going to take up part of the screen that frankly will be covering something that someone is going to want to see. It's different with FIFA because... You know, you can put it over a bit of the screen that's just not going to make any difference. Um, but I thought of a way that's kind of best of both worlds. Basically, what I would do is I'd have a face cam thing set up. Probably top right or bottom left, I'm not entirely sure. And what happened, What would happen is it wouldn't be there most of the time. So, for example, bits like this, it wouldn't be there. You wouldn't see anything. The only time that the face cam would appear is if something ridiculous happened in a live com or something. It would pop up. And I don't know whether that would make it more entertaining because I imagine that, like, sometimes when I um, have something amazing happen in a live com or something horrific, I always think to myself, I bet I look like a fucking idiot right now. And then the next thought is, I bet people would like to see that. Um, so yeah, that is my theory. It would only it would pop up basically at important moments, like not before though, but one you know the reaction to them. So that way you didn't know when it was going to happen or anything like that. So question for you guys is: Is that something you'd like to see? Uh, please, if you have an opinion on it, shove it in the comments. I don't know, saying it again, shove it in. That would be great because um, I can try and sort something like that out because. You know, lots of new capabilities now that the new computer will be here soon. Um, it is not, I wouldn't say it's a monster, but it is quite powerful and I'm really looking forward to it. It's the first time I've ever owned a new computer in my life. I've been hand me down laptops basically. Um, so this is going to be fun. So that's out of the way. Now, we still have a shitload of stuff to talk about um, in today's episode before we get into our first game of the Premier League, which is at Bramall Lane against Sheffield United. I'm really happy to see the Blades back in the Premier League. And. Apologies, guys, I've got to go let a cat out. And I'm back. Right, um, where was I? Oh, yeah. Sheffield United back in the Premier League. That is a lovely old thing to see. And I'm very, very pleased about that. We have transfers to talk about. Now, I got £27 million of transfer money. And I've spent... Well, actually, I've actually only spent £20 million <laughs> Only, he says. But, I don't know, the, the funds are much lower than that. I don't have 7 million left. There was other things, that obviously, expenses and whatnot. Um, plus, a few players have left the club. We're going to just go over all of that in a sec. Right, so let's get straight into that, actually. Um, so I don't know why I'm out of breath. <laughs> right, so, um, transfer history, let's dig straight into this. We've made five signings. Um, four of which are for monetary values and one of which is on free. And, uh, well, a lot of loans have gone out. Uh, there's a couple of permanent transfers and obviously a lot of people have left on free. So let's talk about the people going out first. George Parker's gone to Sutton on loan and then are people that have left the club. Michael Chambers, who I don't think ever actually played for us in a game, despite being here for a very, very long time. Uh, how many games did he actually ever play for us? None. One. He played one game for Pompey in the entire time he was at the club. I don't know how he... He must have had an incredibly long contract because I don't remember extending it. <laughs> uh, Raka Wanwe has left the club as well. I, just He just wasn't good enough anymore. Um, maybe we could have handled him better when he was younger, but there we go. Uh, Albert Torres Crespo has also left. He was on a bit of wage and he wasn't that great. So I just felt that in the end, it might just be best, especially since we're not using that many centre mids at the moment. I didn't need so many of them. Ashley Shaw, Victorian An uh, Angban, who never really made the grade for us. He did, well, in fact, didn't actually play a single game for us in the entire time he was at the club. It's because he didn't have a, a work permit when he first joined, which was a bit of a pain. Um, so that's, you know, it, it happens. Adam Webster, the captain, 
he just wasn't good enough. I, I mean, seriously, I don't know whether he's joined another club yet. I'd like to think that for his sake, there we go, he's joined Wigan. Um, but look, he's a two-star player. And we, we couldn't be dealing with that. We do have a new captain, and that is Jack Watmore. Um, vice captain is Jed Wallace, uh, two of the longer serving players at the club. Jed Wallace is actually the top goal scorer for our entire save so far with 88 goals in the league. I want him to hit 100, and I think he will do that. Maybe not this year, but soon. Connor Chaplin, of course, is also, again, on the way out. Once again, a two-star player. Uh, Nicky Bill, Aaron White, Tim Prescott, who was actually one of the players I was quite excited about youth-wise uh, towards the start of the save, but, again, didn't quite happen for him. He has left... Josh Alexander Glenn Sainsbury, the one that looks like uh, Zorro or whatever, has joined Kidderminster on loan. Mickey Barnett, who is one of our more uh, highly prized players, uh, still, you know, reasonably good, decent potential for a 17-year-old. He has joined Notts County. Bernd Schmidt has joined Dynamo Dresden for half a million pounds. Although he had some potential, I just didn't think that he was maybe going to be ever quite good enough to really push for it. And half a million quid just get the money in, you know? Neil Upton, Rob Spear, Reese Barry, Alex Shepard, of course, gone alone. Julian Maylard's gone out to Belgium on loan. Kevin Beach, Carl Moss, and Christian Salas are all gone out on loan. Now, let's get on to the bit that you're really interested in. <laughs> um, right, we're going to talk about the, the free transfer first. This is Wally, or as he should henceforth be known, Wall. So, yeah, we're going to go with that. He's a tiny little robot all on his own. However, I, I cannot believe this. He was yet another one of these ones that you can get sometimes, although it wasn't like... He was a little bit like, you know how I got Arsenhus, how he was just floating around on the free transfers? Yeah, same to this guy. Look, he's got 24 goals in 38 matches for Bahia in Serie B in Brazil last year. And... Or was it like... No, okay, season before. And was floating around on the free agents lists amazingly. I guess they couldn't afford his wages, but he wasn't on that much. So I decided, fuck it, bring the lad in. Complete forward. Um actually has fairly decent stats for that. I mean, okay, some of his mentals are a little bit low, but look at some of these. Heading 17, passing 15, technique. Very, very na great, good natural fitness. I like him. Good as an advance forward as well, really, although his composure decisions... A couple of his mental stats could do with a little bit of an improvement, um, and hopefully if I can get him a tutor from someone slightly older, although we don't really have an old striker, really, at the moment. But for me... He is a good player. Plus, he can play on either wing as well, which is kind of the main reason. He's sort of another type of Luigi Lucarelli type player. And I got him on a free transfer. And I think we paid roughly 10000 in agent fees for this lad. It was a great deal. I couldn't believe it when I saw him. Um, finally, my South American scout brought back a free agent. I mean, he's brought back a lot of good players, but it was just awesome. Right, so moving on to the next player. We have... Ooh, actually, I'll tell you who we should go for. Let's talk about Milton. We've already shown you Milton. He has now joined the club permanently. 3.9 million, although it ended up costing us five because of the silly, you know, third-party ownership stuff. But he's got some decent stats and a very fairly decent mentals as well. Um, he's just going to be used as a sort of backup to sort of Kieran Griffiths type of player. Um, although, still, he's got a bit about him, and I like the kid, and he's got a little bit of room for improvement too, so I'm pretty pleased with him into the club as well we didn't actually manage to get him initially because you know i was saying that we had to keep delaying the transfer well i delayed it so long that they eventually cancelled it and then i had to reapply but we did get it through and he got a work permit so that's perfect wally also got a work permit which i was very pleased about and a little bit surprised i've got to say i was a little bit surprised that he actually got a work permit but he did and it was glorious now that's all well and good but now we need to talk about the other three players i've brought in so you might notice that Kevin McAvoy wasn't mentioned here. That's because I've given him a new contract. Simply because he was still a three and a half star player at the moment. Has actually done all right for injuries lately. I gave him a new contract, not on a much, um, but just to sort of tide him over. We can always sell him now because we've got four, like, four years left of him now. We can sell him on if we need to, get a couple of million quid for him. And he's just useful for backup, really, if nothing else. But I did manage to bring someone in who I think in a few years is going to take over his place. And that is this guy. This is Yasser Amrani. I brought him in... Um, oh, God, who was it from? It was a Belgian side, wasn't it? No, it was Dino Bucharest, in fact, in um, Romania. He... Well, he hasn't really played a great... I mean, 20 games last year, um, but he's still quite young. He's, what, 19 years old. But for me, he has some insane stats for a winger. Um... Or, you know, we use support wingers, so any real weaknesses, I couldn't find any. I mean, like, everything that we want, apart from maybe his acceleration is a little low, 11. But crossing and dribbling at 16, first touch 15, passing 12, technique high as well. Off the ball is good, he's got some decent mental stats in some areas. Got a good long shot on him. You know, he's just a good player. Like, very nothing in his technicals is below 10, which is awesome. 
like he's two stars at the moment but I think with some game time this lad could really come a long way this year and we got him for 2.5 million pounds so I was pretty pleased with the business we've done there really um, I'm hoping that when the new computer gets here I'm going to add a load more leagues into the database for next season so it should get us a lot more players to choose from and just in general make the things a little bit more exciting That that's basically the idea anyway so yeah that's Yasir Amrani pretty damn pleased with him um then I decided, right, we need defenders. Now, if you remember, um, I showed you this guy, I think, before on our transfer. Like, when we got some stuff through from our scouts, I'm pretty certain I showed you David Francois and said that I might take a look at him. Now, I went a bit further than taking a look at him and actually went and ended up buying him. Uh, ended up buying him because I just think that, okay, his aggression is quite low and that is a little bit of a worry, but I'm hoping that we can try and just work on that. Mate, I don't know. That is a... Like, that was my one sort of hold back on him, but we shall have to see. He has got a sports hernia at the moment, so he won't be playing today's game anyway. But I just think that there's potential, if nothing else, for some profit to be made on him. Like, we bought him for uh, 6.5 million, and he's already worth more than that. So, again, potential there, but that could just be because of the contract. I I'm not sure. I still think that there's something there. He's got some decent stats. His heading is decent. His marking is decent. His tackling is very, very good. He's very, very determined. A good team player. Decent physicals as well, although his jumping reach again a little bit low, but he's got decent heading, so um, that is a worry, but he's not going to be playing today anyway. I'm still pretty pleased with him, but I, I was just scraping the barrel. I said I was going to go and find experienced defenders. I couldn't find any that were like good defenders. Like There were old ones, but they were all like two, two and a half star players, and there were like really, really, really good defenders that were like 30, 40 million pounds. So I had to go young again, basically, guys, and I think what I'm slowly doing is building a team that in a couple of seasons is going to be absolutely dominant or hoping that it will be like they're going to keep getting better. Like you see what players like Burrell, uh, who's, you know, this will be his third season at the club. He's really come a long way in that time. Marcelo's looking good. Kieran Griffiths. Hopefully this will be his year. But the player I'm most excited about is this lad who actually brought in from Ajax, would you believe? This is Pedro Miguel Lopez Souza, who I'm just going to call Pedro. No, Pedro Lopez Souza. But my point is, he's a four-star defender with a little bit more potential in the bank. He's 22, so he's not super young. He's worth 10.5 million pounds, though. He's quite tall. He's, you know, he's fairly tall. Has decent jumping reach and decent heading anyway. Marking is good. Tackling is pretty decent, too. Anticipation and aggression. He's got some really decent mentals. His leadership is a bit low, but, you know, oh well. Um, he's not going to be captain. I, I, I really like this lad, and I think he is going to be leading that defensive line for us and just giving us a little bit more... Uh, back up in that area um, so yeah we've got that's basically what we've done in the transfer market I'm not fully finished yet but we've, we've you know I'm looking at signing maybe a fullback a left side of fullback to just provide a bit of backup I nearly sold Saeed Yanko to Huddersfield they wanted well they offered me 4.2 million I said give me five but they wouldn't give it to me up front then and I needed the money now so I could buy a replacement and yeah, I wasn't just gonna I wasn't gonna do that so here's what we've got left as far as money goes we've got 19k and two 2 million so I can move that around anywhere I like and I might pick up a couple more free transfers if I can find some just to strengthen the squad a little bit although we've got a fairly decent squad now and I've been trying something new in pre-season so the training this year uh, for pre-season was high intensity on fitness put more towards um, less match training so over here so we got more fitness training and we barely got any injuries apart from um, Charlie Taylor picked up a knock and obviously Francois got a slight knock, but that is it. Nobody, even Kenneth McAvoy and Ali Burrell got through. Anna Vancic all got through pre-season without a single injury, which was very pleasing, if you ask me. Now that we're back in the season, we're back on balanced and low, but I think it's going to give us a little bit of an edge, and I'm hoping that that will enable us to not get so many injuries this year. If you look at the schedule uh, for the games we played in pre-season, I did play a lot of friendlies again. Every time I've looked at these things to do with getting less injuries and ways to prepare for the season, they always say friendlies against lower quality opposition since the game does not care who they're playing against. It only measures the morale. Um, losing the last two friendlies is a bit of a shame. I've changed the tactics around slightly. Um, so which I'll, I'm going to show you that, but we'll get into the match preview before I show you that. So Sheffield United, what kind of system are they playing? They're away, they're playing a 4-2-1-2-1 kind of system. Um, I'm thinking we're going to go for our, this system here. But basically what I've changed now is that this system, just as it was before, structured counter. This system though, we're going to go standard. And this system is going to be an attacking system. We're not fully like ready for them just yet, but that's because I've changed the uh, 
back to attacking. So it knocked off the kind of yeah familiarity a little bit. So we're going to go with this system for today. I'm thinking we can change things around during the game anyway. But I think that because of the way they're playing, we could do with an extra midfielder in there rather than sitting back quite as much. Since their system is clearly designed to sit back, we need to be a little bit more proactive. So let's just see what my assistant thinks. I've mm, Right, I'm going to start Millington instead of Burrell though. Just because I personally prefer him at the moment. So he has chosen Millington, Musonda, Wallace, McAvoy, Griffiths, Ivancic at the back. Staff is Zabaras because uh, Charlie Taylor has a knock, which is why I need to change something there. What more? Uh, Lopez Souza and Marcelo. And Augustin Martinez is now going to be trying out in goal. I want to give this lad a go because I think he could be better than Daniel Backman. And so does Steve Weaver. So I'm going to give him a go. And on the bench, this is where things start to look a lot better now. Backman, Yanko, Peralta... Burrell, Gray, Asenhus, and Lucarelli. To me, there is not really a weak link on that bench. Lucarelli actually won Premier League Player of the Month for May because he scored five goals in four appearances from that right-hand side. It looks a lot better. And if you look beyond that, there's still some all right players there too. Borges is there, Francois, uh, Shane Rennie, of course, uh, Dylan Vastraten, Dominic Hyam. There's some okay players. Uh, ben Osborne, Charlie Taylor. Th we look a bit stronger, I feel. like The bench for me is much, much stronger than it was last season. That that is key, and I'm hoping that Lopez Souza will be able to provide that extra defensive strength for us. But only time will tell. I'm really hoping we can be much stronger defensively this season. I'm looking for a good year. I'm really going to be concentrating on the cups this season because I think that could be our big chance to get into some European football at some point. Um, we are now expected to finish mid table. I couldn't. That was the lowest I could go. So that's what we're expecting, and I, I think we could do that. You know, no doubt that we're able to do that. Really. Um, so we're just going to have to see about what's going to happen when we play against Sheffield United. Um, this stand to get that through. You'll notice that there was a George Williams in the Sheffield United team. That is the George Williams that plays for Fulham at the moment. He's a kid at the moment, but um, he's got a lot of potential. So oh, let's do this. Let's just do this and see what comes out of it. I, I think we're good enough today. See what Lopez Souza is the only first team, uh, uh, sorry, starting 11 player that's actually making his debut today. So most of the others are on the bench, like Peralta and the like, basically. Uh, Francois, of course, is injured still. So I'm hoping that we can come up with something decent today. A short passing style. Well, that's not really our Goulam. Oh, no, not long throws. Please, not long throws. Cleared away. Get to that first. They'll... Oh, what was that? He could have easily played that into Norman Millington. Anyway, I'm going to try and complain less. That was terrible defending, and that's a woeful effort. But bad defending there. Um... Oh, thank God. I thought that was going to be one of our best players. You know how it is. Um, <laughs> you, avoid, you avoid most of the injuries in pre-season. The moment the season starts, bang, injuries. Uh, oh, now we should play long balls. You've changed your mind, Sylvan. Pick one and stick to it. Ooh, corner. Wallace with the ball. Out to Kenneth McAvoy. He loves these areas. Musonda with the ball up. Down it comes and away. And I think oh, Griffiths has won it. Ball flicked across the box and it's cleared away again. Knocked back in again. Cleared away again. <laughs> it is a bit like pinball at the moment. What more? The captain. His first game as captain of Pompey. Musonda around the corner for Sir Norman Millington. And that should have been 1-0 Pompey there. Good little run there from Sir Norman. I'm hoping that he puts in a shift this year and gets us 25 goals. So I can update his name to King Norman. Because I think he would deserve it if he did that. Musonda, he's got to get the ball out wide again. He has to. Please don't just lose it now. Gets it to McAvoy. And now he's lost it instead. <laughs> well, first big chance of the game, though, goes to Pompey. And that's positive. Although we are playing against the side like Sheffield United. So, heck, maybe if we're continuing to dominate in this second half, we could even up it to our more offensive tactic. Just have to wait and see. Uh, I'm looking at maybe another idea where we have the two centre mids, but then drop our attacking mid almost as a defensive midfielder. We're looking better than them in this first half, but not so much... Not, like, dominantly better. We should be... Oh, that's an absolutely gorgeous ball. Millington now with the ball at his feet. He's got two defenders there. He's going to have to shoot. Will he shoot? He does, and it's a pretty poor effort from him, but it is another effort from Pompey, and that's more than we can say about Sheffield United so far. Though they have had a clear-cut chance, apparently. I don't recall that, but... Uh-oh, please not one before half-time. I'd like to win today, because it is Sheffield United. They are newly promoted, so for me, we should be beating them. Um, even though it is away from home, and we've not been our strongest away from home. I'd like to see us start picking up points in these kind of games. Get to that first. Get to that first. There we go. Wallace now. There's a bit of... There's a few players forward he could use here. Musonda. Round the corner for Norman Millington. 1-0 Pompey. That time, he was not going to miss. Sheffield United 0, Portsmouth 1. And we've got our deserved lead. Ah, oh, lovely stuff. And who better to open the scoring for Pompey this season than Sir Norman himself? Hopefully, that will be the first of many. For me, he just looks better in those situations than Ali Burrell has in the past. I've been constantly berating Burrell. I find... Oh, that's a headline there. Berating? 
I just find that, yeah, it's not pleasant. But it's a lovely little ball through from Charlie Musonda and Millington with the first time finish. Drills it low and hard and it's 1-0 to Pompey at Bramall Lane. That is a glorious finish from Norman Millington. Now, question is, what do we do in the second half? Do we persist with the system we're playing or do we drop into our more defensive style? But would that then allow them onto us? My guess is we're going to just keep stick with this for a bit. I'm going to say around about 65 minutes when that first substitution is going to be made. I might drop back to counter attack then. That way it's just sort of let them try and break us down essentially. Um, but of course we've got better defenders now. So hopefully we can avoid silliness, <laughs> which is essentially what we're trying to avoid. They've had a, they're looking a bit better now. They've not been bad. They've not been bad in this game. But they've not been as clinical in front of goal or created as better chances as us. I, I can't use the right words here. Oh, for the love of God, Kevin, please no, not now. Okay, well, luckily, we have players on the bench. Um, although it is going to have to be... Oh, wait, no, is it? Where's Musonda playing? He's playing as an attacking mid at the moment. So, right, okay, what I'm going to do is... Switch Musonda out to the left, because I think he's better there. And I'm going to bring on Milton Peralta for his debut in a Pompey shirt. So Peralta will come off for McAvoy, and he will play in the centre. I want to see what this lad can do. Musonda back across Millington. Oh, and don't tell me that was a chance. Really? But Lopez Souza, for me, he looks much more assured of himself at the back. And obviously we've got Martinez in goal. And what are you doing, Augustin? Like, Griffiths. If you can knock it around the corner here to McAvoy, last chance before he goes off. Nice round the corner for South Staff is that right? He's never going to get that. Oh, he has Millington and it's saved again. That should have been 2-0. That had to be 2-0, really. Marcelo now bringing it down. And Pompey are actually looking better in this second half than we did in the first half. That's much nicer. I'm liking the way we're playing. Obviously, what Sheffield United have done has not worked so far. It's actually, if anything, played into our tactical hands slightly more here. Zabaras now into Musonda. Musonda with the ball across. Wallace! Millington, Musonda, oh yes, it is 2-0 to Portsmouth. And Norman Millington's having a lovely old time today. That, I think, will be his, he assisted that. It was really nice patience as well. Once they got that ball in the box, they didn't rush it. Musonda here, I thought Wallace was going to score, but it actually comes to, to Millington and he knocks it back across to Musonda instead of trying to go for goal. And that was nice to see. Really good teamwork from the guys there. And that's 2-0 now. And... At the moment, though, things are going quite well for us. I'm going to make a substitu second substitution now. Griffiths is looking a little bit worse for wear. Um, unfortunately, I've used Milton Peralta up front there. I think I'm going to bring in Asenhus to just play in that centre um, for now. We're looking good, though. We're looking very, very good. Sheffield United are almost certainly going to come at us at some point, so it's probably around about now. Oh, for the love of Jesus. Why can't I not pick the right time to do that? Okay, after this highlight, um, in fact, screw it. Because even if they score, I still want to do this. So we're going to go um, back to this tag. And it works because we've got our defensive midfielders there anyway. Um, not going to go on defensive, just going to go on counter. But we'll switch to that afterwards. Uh, although, oh, hang on, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, that's better. Advantage is better as a sort of tackling kind of player. I'm hoping that we get away with this highlight. And, oh, wait, great play from Zabras there. He's actually done well today. Asenhus and finds Peralta. Can he pick a pass? He's good at dribbling Peralta. He can run at people. And that's something that Kieran Griffiths doesn't really do. So that might put teams on the back foot a little bit more against this. Wallace, ball across, Millington. Oh, my goodness, that was a great chance. Um, offside, though, doesn't matter. We're two goals to the good here at Bramall Lane. And we are, oh, no, Williams. I still think it was the right decision to sit to this defensive tactic. Now, I want to keep a clean sheet here, and I feel that this is our best chance of doing it. Zabaras, he started some attacks today with those throws. I'm, I'm liking that. Asnu's great ball into the channel for Whit Millington. Somebody needs to get in the box, though. Somebody has to. He's done done two of them. Musonda flicks it a one, and it's going to come away, but Ivancic is pushing out of defence here to try and bring this down for us. Marcelo needs to look inside. He has to look in field here. Does Ivancic, Asnu's, Musonda. Can he slide it through the channel for Millington? Oh, that was a chance for 3-0. Great performance from Pompey today, though. Just all over the pitch. We've been really, really solid. They've had some clear-cut chances, apparently. I've just not seen them. Wallace, Millington, and offside again. But the point is, he's getting in good positions today. And there we go, 2-0 at Bramall Lane. Two goals for Pompey, an assist and a goal for Norman Millington, and an assist and a goal for Charlie Musonda. Pretty much the perfect performance to start the season off with the lovely result there, and an away win. I'm happy with that. We limited them quite well. We looked pretty decent on the ball. We were solid at the back. Looked good going forward. I'm pretty damn positive about the way this season's going to go. We've not got 
off to the bad start like we did last year where we you know we've got our first win on the opening day and that is just what we needed right now so there we go guys um let's go into the i'm still looking at oh actually let's just check out what's up with kevin while we're here uh, you know three weeks it could be worse it could be worse so it's not too bad is there anything else i need to worry about there no i think we're good right so in the next episode we will be doing the game at the end of august of course which is the swansea city game uh, i've basically just got one game in between which is the afc wimbledon capital one cup game uh, so that's going to be fun I'm hoping I can put out a slightly weakened side there and get away with it, because we are at home and it's AFC Wimbledon. They're a League 2 side, so I think we should be good enough. It would be a good chance to get some of the youngsters playing. I'll probably put Lucarelli up front in that game, and maybe um, Amrami. Uh, yeah, or something like that. I don't know. We'll, we'll, I'll decide when I get to it. The point is, I think we've started well. What do you think of the signings? Do you think we're going to do well this season? What are your predictions? So, guys, if you like what you've seen, please feel free to drop a like on the episode. And if you'd like to even more than that, please feel free to subscribe to my channel for more Portsmouth and Red Star Belgrade in your inbox every single day at 5.30 and 8 o'clock. And I will see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.